House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi spoke for more than eight hours during that budget debate. It was the longest continuous speech on the House floor well over a century, and it was all to force a discussion on DACA. It was like something out of the Huey Long era. And we asked former San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown, no stranger to political filibustering, and Politico's Carla Marinucci, what was it really all about? Oh, it was an incredible performance. Nancy Pelosi in high heels, standing there for eight hours and making it interesting. It was not like just somebody spitting words out. She actually had sentences. She had stories. She had things worthy of it. And it reestablished Nancy Pelosi as truly the Democratic leader of the House. Okay, reality check, Carla? Yeah, four, four inch heels. And she finished it off by having avocado toast. That is so California. Nancy Pelosi was able to deliver story after story of these dreamers. And that is the message that the Democrats wanted to get out. These are human beings. This is a big cost that the Trump administration is is pulling here. And I think uh, I think the, the mayor's America, right. America, she put herself in the national America. spotlight for hours, and it, and, it, and it was a dramatic moment. And at no point did she say sanctuary city. At no point did she say preference. She went through it beautifully. And not one thing that she said could be disagreed with, even by the most conservative okay, member of the but House. But has she put herself and the party in a corner, saying the dreamers are this important? Ergo, if Trump and the Republicans say they get to stay, but we want the wall, what does she do then? Well, I, you know, the wall, I think they're going to have to give something to Trump on the wall and border security. But the dreamers are a line in the sand. So the she's Democrats. making the dreamers. She made the case that the dreamers are bigger than the wall. Yeah, I, I believe that was so. the subject. And Paul Ryan has said they're, they are going to make some kind of agreement. on First it. and foremost, the wall is going to be defined differently than just simply a structure. You're going to have a whole host of things going into what's called the wall, and they will be things that are totally acceptable to Democrats as well as Republicans. And Trump being Trump, the practical dude that he can occasionally be, he is going to accept it and keep it defined as a wall, yet you're not going to see one piece of wood, brick, or mortar anywhere. A wall is a wall, unless you don't call it a wall. Okay. <laughs> Assemblywoman Christina Garcia was recognized nationally as an advocate in the Me Too movement. And now the Democratic member of the Legislative Women's Caucus is being investigated for sexual harassment. A 25-year-old aide to another lawmaker says Garcia squeezed his buttocks and touched his crotch during a 2014 legislative softball game. A second man tells Politico Garcia tried to grab his crotch during a 2017 fundraiser. Garcia high-profile advocacy of the Me Too movement earned her national attention. In December, she was seen right here, including in Time Magazine's Silence Breakers cover story on those who spoke out against sexual harassment. Last year, her charges against male lawmakers prompted two to resign. It's not our responsibility. It's not the victim's responsibility. It's how do those with power, how do they help fix this problem? Now, Garcia denies the claims, but says she'll take an unpaid leave of absence while they're being investigated. She issued a statement saying, upon reflection of the details alleged, I'm certain I did not engage in the behavior I'm accused of. Any claims about sexual harassment must be taken seriously, she says, and I believe elected officials should be held to a higher standard of accountability. Now, Politico's Carla Marinucci broke the story, so I asked her, along with San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown, Especially Carla, well, what does this do for the whole Me Too movement? Well, she too could be the next uh, iteration of Me Too. That is, women lawmakers are now going to be under the same microscope as the men. And the question is going to be, will the standards be the same uh, when victims come forward? Now, in the case of Daniel Ferrero, was it the same? Well, uh, th this is a young legislative staffer uh, who worked for Ian Calderon three years ago. Uh, just came forward this year uh, as the Me Too movement broke. Um, and this has now been reported as being investigated okay, but, by Assembly Rules. All right, so he goes to the Assembly Rules where it's supposed to be held confidential. As confidential. And with what? Within minutes, it's out on the... On the uh... He told us within 48 hours, people were calling him. There was clearly a leak up there. The confidentiality thing is not holding. Uh, he started fearing for his own business, and so he decided to speak out. Mayor Brown, is this kind of thing... Can you actually legislate or rule conduct like this? Or do people just have to be bounced? I think ultimately you're going to find that people are going to have to be bounced, but it'll work itself out ultimately. 
it's becoming far too penetrated into the heart and soul of the whole house. Just wait till one of the leaders get nailed. Then you're really going to have the problem. So the well, challenge is not met yet. Though. Tell us a little about the Assemblywoman. She is a pretty heavy well, hitter. Uh, this is the issue. Assemblywoman Christina Garcia has been an icon in the Me Too movement. She's demanded that male legislators uh, step aside when there have been these accusations uh, until an investigation is done. That's what makes this story interesting because so far she's not stepping aside and we're, we're going to see how this plays out. And the only way for the movement to maintain the same credibility is that her conduct has to be evaluated and operated the same way as Tony Mendoza and all of the other members who've been accused. Well, we taped that Friday, and since then she has mm -hmm. stepped aside. Yeah. Uh, that's the latest wrinkle in this ongoing debate and as revelations go well between Sacramento and now we have spousal mm -hmm. abuse allegations at the White House. It is a not ending story. Yeah.